Hi everybody, I am back in the same outfit. I'm going to be in the same outfit for the next three videos. So just know I filmed three videos in one day. I was working, okay? I was working for this course. All right, we are now in episode five of the Cyber Intro series. Welcome back to my channel. I am the Digital Empress, if you didn't know already. And I am your fave informant in the cybersecurity field. And if you want to know more about the cybersecurity field and learn how to get jobs, be more knowledgeable in the field, and just watch a lovely black woman teach you so, make sure to subscribe down below. We are almost done and at the end of the series. I'm so proud of myself, okay? Chapter five and chapter six are gonna be very short videos. So this video may be like under 10 minutes. So will chapter six, because I know I have kept y'all for like maybe over 10 minutes in this video. I try not to make these videos very long because you know, who wants to, who wants to review complicated information? You know, who wants to sit through? I mean, some of you guys may wanna see me for like, you know, 30 plus minutes, but you know. We want to get more into the ethical hacking and splunk and all of that, okay? So I just had to prepare y'all before we get into that course, okay? Y'all need to know the basics before we get into the advanced stuff, okay? In chapter five, we're basically going to be creating advanced threat protection policies. So after we know what malware is, after we know how malware works in the cyber attack life cycle, after we know why traditional security solutions fail, and now that we know what type of firewall we want, we need to ensure we got some policies in place to make sure all of that is extra and super secure. So if you have somehow come across this video before you watch any of the rest of the series episodes, this is basically a mini series on cyber security information and everything you should know and be in the mindset of before you get into the cyber security field. This is the book I'm taking and using for this course. Most of the stuff that you have seen or heard me talk about in this series or you're gonna watch in this video is from this book. You can get this book for free by clicking the link in my description you can read through it in more depth. And I also created notes based on every chapter in this book, and they are all going to be on the blog post on my website, which is also in the description box below. So as I was reading the book, most of the stuff that I was reading in here, I had to know as a cybersecurity engineer. This book also helped me to fill in any knowledge gaps that I had so going into my new freelance cybersecurity business, I can better help secure businesses and small companies and help people better protect their applications. So we're gonna be overviewing today in chapter five, developing effective governance and applying policies and controls to protect mobile users and devices. We haven't really touched on mobile devices in this course yet but everything that we have discussed you want to be also thinking about mobile devices because now we have iphones and ipads watches you want to be also thinking about that as well on the network the first thing we're going to talk about that they talked about in the fifth chapter is in safe enablement through smart policies IT teams have to get together and establish smart policies for an organization's security. And this is basically to mitigate risk on the network and to get users to avoid causing risk on the network. Oh, I wanna also talk about physical risk and they haven't really got into this. We've kind of just been talking about things on a network level. Users can cause physical risk as well. A lot of users 
tend to be very nice to people that they don't know or look like they're professional or passing as somebody that works in the company. They could be holding the door open for unknown users. And if you don't have like some type of policy for people to, or people that you've never seen before to come into an organization, if they're, you're just letting them in and not verifying them or have some type of, you know, wait here until I verify you and we get your signature and we get you on camera, then you have a problem because anybody can come in, they could be getting on, the com on a computer, downloading a bunch of data, you know, stealing information out of trash cans. Like that's a risk. Oh, users wearing their badges and stuff out. You should never, ever, ever wear your badge outside of your job. Okay, your badge is only supposed to give you access into the job and out of the job. And once you're out of the job, take that thing off. Leave. I used to leave my badge in my car or I would throw it in my purse if I was out for lunch or something like that. I would not wear my badge. Like, and some people be wearing it right here. They be wearing it right here so everybody know where they work, you know, what's going on. And if you have somebody that is very sneaky, they can steal your badge and use that to get in. They can scan it, scan the barcode or whatever on it and make a copy of the card and be able to get into an organization. And now you messed up. You can let a cyber criminal into your organization and they about to just run loose. So you know how we discussed in the last episode how IT IT should come together with HR and executive management. I think we also touched on this in the episode three as well, chapter three, how we should come together with them and discuss like what applications should be on the network, what the users can and cannot do on the network. Well, you have to do this when implementing policies as well. And because there's different departments in an organization, you have finance, you have HR, they may all need different types of policies because they're all using different types of applications. And along with, you know, them having different types of smart policies, because they're all using different types of applications, they're all going to need different security awareness and training for the types of applications that they use so they know what and what not to do in the event of a security issue. And you might have to implement an acceptable use policy as well, along with developing these smart policies. Well, governance and the management of security on a network, it works best if they're based on smart policies, processes, and training. All three of these are basically developed by IT, HR, and executive management, and sometimes some of the users. So when I was an intern for the government, this was straight after my work study job, I got an internship basically creating SharePoint security policies for um, a department. I basically just went through and discuss with users, uh, department managers, HR, and all of them. I would meet with these people in these meetings, these very high up people, executives, VIPs, and stuff like that. And I had to basically um, create a procedure and I had to go through and organize all of this and present it to them and see if what I had created was acceptable and would work for them. You might have to do that on the job. You might have to sit there and create security policies, uh, create acceptable use policies, uh, determine who and who is not supposed to be using what. And you're gonna have to talk to VIPs, you're gonna be having to talk to managers, you're gonna be having to talk to all these important people and make sure you're professional, okay, guys? Like, you wanna look like a nice professional person. Don't have your boobs out like this, okay? This is just, you know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm working from home now. The IT, a person on the IT team, we're the kings and queens of what's being governed and what's not being governed. And I have to take this very seriously because if we don't and we just kind of like throw it to the back burner, that could create a lot of risk. One of the first smart policies that you probably want to think about when you're going in discussing with IT and HR 
is application controls. What about applications are like the most important thing in the cyber attack life cycle. That's what a lot of hackers are using or black cat hackers, cyber criminals are using to exploit companies and steal their data and sell it. You can allow applications, but only allow the features that users need. You wanna think about limiting the most risk as possible because that is going to keep your network the safest. The next smart policy that should be considered is network controls. You wanna think about network segmentation when you're implementing your next generation firewall. The next smart policy you should think about implementing is endpoint control. So like I said, that may be phones, that may be desktops, laptops, any other thing that connects to the internet. To think about endpoint antivirus and host-based security solutions. And there's a few more in there. And if you guys wanna know more about those, you can look in the description box at the notes. And now we want to pay attention to mobile and remote users when installing or implementing these smart policies. There's this acronym called BYOD or BYOA. In a lot of companies, we can bring our own phone, we can use it, we can use surf the internet. A lot of us may be on social media on these phones these devices in our companies and be on you know tweeting posting statuses on facebook posting pictures on instagram want to you want to create strict policies around this because this creates major risk um especially if the users are using your wi-fi your like public wi-fi or organizational wi-fi if they you know click on a link or a malicious link not just any link but a malicious link or they install something on their app or a malicious app on their phone and it's just sucking up all the data exploiting any vulnerabilities on that wi-fi network that can cause the organization a very big security issue so you want to create smart policies around byod and byoa really want to make sure that they know that if they're bringing their own app or device into the network, they need to practice safe security here or not even connect to the network at all because we can't watch them. The key to building a very great smart policy plan and a great security structure is through planning and it pays attention to what's going on in the modern day society of computing and technology a lot of cyber criminals are moving more towards attacking mobile devices because that's what we're using more nowadays you know you see how we kind of like every decade couple decades hackers and cyber secure cyber criminals move on to the next thing to attack and what more people are using so they can get the most data and the most out of you know their advanced malware they started with email and then they went into applications and now they're moving into mobile devices and mobile device applications so you have to stay consistent that's why i said Cybersecurity is always going to be evolving. Next, we're probably going to have to secure cars because we're probably going to have self-driving cars and we don't want people getting hacked into and getting flown off a cliff because, you know, a cyber criminal decide to kill somebody in their self-driving car. <laughs> I know it's a little bit extreme, but you know, anything is possible in the field of cybersecurity. If we can create it, it can get hacked. Okay. That's why we have to implement smart policies and firewalls and ISPs or IPSs, I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that. So that's it for today's video of chapter five. We have learned about smart policies and how to govern our security network. Comment down below if you guys have learned anything from this video or if you have any questions about what we discuss in this episode today and like i said before you can find the notes to this chapter and any other chapters that we have talked about in this series in the description box you could use them to study for interviews or we could just use them in the comments below to start a discussion you can also start a discussion 
on these topics on my blog post in the comment section i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to like comment share and subscribe for more cybersecurity content and i'll see you guys in the next episode